Yeah, awesome. Let's get started. So uh, going serverless with Google Cloud Functions. My name is Grant Timmerman. I'm a, a developer and program engineer, Google Cloud, San Francisco. Uh, I previously led open source for uh, G Suite APIs. I personally, I love Node, uh, GitHub, and I play the Alto Sax in my spare time. Yeah, Alto Sax fans. Okay, uh, before we get started, I would love to take a selfie. So uh, if we can all get um, together, I'm good. Uh, ready to go? Okay, uh, three, two, one. Cheers. Cheers. Okay, cool. Awesome, did that. Uh, cool. So the agenda, well, we're going to talk about what is serverless. Um, Google Cloud Functions, uh, specifically how you can deploy uh, Node functions that will scale for you in the cloud, and then uh, a couple demos. So what is serverless? Well, serverless, uh, it enhances developer productivity, where you have an operational model, where you don't have to manually scale up and scale down servers. For example, if uh, it's Christmas time and you have a lot more traffic, you don't need to worry about uh, do I have enough uh, servers running. Uh, you get fully managed security, uh, so the underlying operating system will be upgraded for you. And you only pay for what you use. So if you're not using your server, if nobody's going to your website or using the service, you don't have to pay for uh, empty servers, basically. Uh, so deep capital. Uh, and the New York Times really loves serverless and su summarizes it this way. Uh, Google Cloud serverless platform allows us to focus on building product features without having to worry about provisioning, scaling, and configuration management for the underlying infrastructure. The tools and abstractions have been a game changer, allowing teams to iterate and scale with ease. So uh, serverless is more than just a set of uh, functions. It's really uh, a spectrum of uh, computing options. Everything from data processing to, MubSub, to messaging with PubSub to uh, your database options. And uh, I like to uh, explain it with this type of spectrum, where you, on the very left, you'll see a Google Compute Engine. So this is where if you want to rent raw machines, like basically VMs, you can do that all the way to the middle. Uh, where we have a uh, Google App Engine, where you want, if you want to host uh, websites, or Google Cloud Run, which we announced uh, in March, where you can host containers. Uh, Blow, if you want to, uh, you can also host uh, containers with a Google, Google Kubernetes Engine. And for this talk, we'll talk, focus on uh, Cloud Functions, which provides a really simple abstraction uh, for you to get started with serverless. So, uh, which of these hexagons is actually Google Cloud Functions? Well, it's this one in the middle. It's where uh, you get to control your compute. So, uh, let's first think uh, big picture. Uh, so, what do servers actually do? Well, so, well, servers, uh, if you use servers, you have to provide your own hardware. You have to provide maintenance, spare parts, staffing, developer operations, server rooms, electricity, uh, operation, idle time, that time, uh, upgrading the operating system, etc. And you have to over-provision if you want to make sure that uh, your users can go buy uh, teddy bears on uh, Black Friday, right? Um, <laughs> And so, like, these are all things that I think as developers that we don't really want to, we don't want to worry about. We want to be able to hand over the scaling, the infrastructure, the hardware parts to the experts and focus on our code, focus on our applications. So if you go this route, it can cost a lot of uh, money and it can cost a lot of uh, developer time. So again, why, why do we think about servers? Why can't we just focus on our applications? Well, so that's where Google Cloud Functions comes in. 
Google Cloud Functions is a fully uh, serverless platform for event-driven serverless uh, computing. So uh, what is Functions as a Service? Well, really it's part of the serverless movement where your logic is written by the application developer and uh, that application runs in a fully managed uh, stateless computing uh, container that automatically scales uh, based off of demand. You can trigger this function uh, on different types of events, everything from HTTP, uh, PubSub events, um, Google Cloud Storage uploads, whenever someone uploads a new image uh, to your database, maybe you wanna detect is it uh, copyrighted or, or is it porn or something like that. Um, and uh, functions are ephemeral. So uh, your servers may uh, come and go. You don't actually have persistent uh, storage. So for example, if you have, uh, maybe there's a football game and your traffic spikes uh, 100x, uh, you won't actually uh, have stored long-term memory of uh, what you had in your previous servers. And then uh, lastly, it's managed by a th third party. In this case, it's Google. Uh, so but what, what really are Google Cloud Functions? Well, uh, to summarize, there, it's a lightweight computing option to create single purpose functions that responds to events. So compute option for functions that response to events. So an event is emitted, like an HTTP request, your function is triggered, and then your code is executed. When do you want to use Google Cloud Functions? Well, uh, it's when you want to execute uh, code in response to events, and you don't want to bother with any uh, server setup. What languages can you uh, code Cloud Functions in? Well, there's Node, so we support Node 10, um, which underneath it all uses the Express module, and uh, recently we actually uh, released the open source functions framework, which allows you to develop Google Cloud Functions locally. So you get the exact same environment uh, locally on your machine that you get when you deploy it in the cloud and we scale it for you. I think that's really awesome. That was uh, released uh, in March. It's open source. For Python, we support uh, Python 3.7 and it uses Flask. And then Go. Uh, Go supports, uh, the version is 11, uh, 111.6, and it just uses the native HTTP module. Uh, second, uh, Google Cloud functions are event-driven, so you can trigger this function on uh, any of your HTTP, uh, any HTTP like REST uh, API. Um, so anything from, uh, you want to trigger it on a drive callback, or maybe your your Nest thermostat will call this function. Um, or you can have background functions. So you can say, uh, hey, whenever I upload something to Google Cloud Storage, I want to trigger this event. Maybe a stack driver log entry comes in. Uh, you can filter it on that and uh, fire a function off, off of that. Or with Firebase, um, maybe you have uh, Firebase analytics and you want to trigger some uh, for some cloud function off of that. Cool, so technically, how does this actually work? Well, so you can listen to, for HTTP, you can listen to your, your post put gets delete all of your different options, um, and, or all of your different methods, and your actual URL will look something like this, where you have a fully qualified HTTPS domain, uh, or scheme, and you'll have your region dash your project ID dot cloud functions dot net, and then slash whatever your function name is. So an example is just US Central dash my project, and cloud functions, and then my uh, function name. For uh, PubSub, so you can listen to a PubSub topic. Just to be clear, PubSub is a, a messaging system where you can say, hey, I have a topic of let's say a new user signed up for my service. I want to uh, do a bunch of things. I want to create a database uh, record. I want to uh, send an email. I want to do a couple of things. Well, you can say, 
you can say the new user uh, event is into PubSub, and you can listen uh, to that event with a Google Cloud function. Uh, what you'll get is you'll get the actual data of the event and some context, like the timestamp and the, the resource. You can also trigger on uh, cloud functions or cloud storage. So whenever a new object is created, um, again, if you upload an image or you uh, get a new database record, you can uh, trigger a function off of that. And then uh, Firebase. So if you use Firebase, for, especially for uh, um, mobile developers using the real-time database or uh, Firebase Analytics, you can listen to all of those events too. So you can imagine uh, the architecture of your application might look something like this, where you might have a Google Cloud Storage picture upload, which triggers a cloud function, which is represented by the circles, which might trigger another Google Cloud function, which actually talks to a database. Um, or maybe you have uh, a new user and you want to trigger a couple of functions. Or maybe you just have a normal HTTP function. So, so what does this look like in actual code? Well, it's really simple. This is actually one of the reasons I love uh, Google Cloud Functions, because it's, it's literally like, this is hello world. Uh, it doesn't take any boilerplate. You don't even need uh, a package.json that uh, comes for you. Um, and it uh, just uses the express underneath. So what about pricing? Well, so the first two million uh, functions you invocate per month are free. Then for every additional uh, function it's uh, per month, it's 40 cents. So it uh, can be quite economical. Um, you are also, the pricing is a combination of the number of invocations, the compute time, and the networking. So if uh, you have a really long function, it's fractions of a penny per minute, charge per 100 milliseconds, and then the networking is every gigabyte of egress of out, um, outward uh, network calls you get, uh, it's 12 cents. Um, if you're uh, receiving uh, calls, ingress, it's free. Cool. So uh, I got this uh, actually last night um, in San Francisco. Uh, uh, was the question about, uh, what about cold starts? Well, um, first, I'd like to say it's, it's a real thing. And there's, um, so sometimes when um, deploying your function, uh, your function may take uh, 30 to 60 seconds, in my experience, to actually uh, fully load up. And also, if you don't use a function for an extended period of time, it might take uh, a while for that uh, like container to boot up and to actually serve your function. Um, some of the tips that I have uh, are you can reduce dependencies. So if you have really heavy dependencies, you're going to just make that um, node module like, take a lot longer to start up. Um, you can also use uh, regions. So if you have uh, like users in Europe or uh, in the US, you can split up your functions that way. And we have some really great videos. Uh, this is Cole, um, who has a, a YouTube video on uh, Cloud Functions uh, cold boot time. Cool. So uh, what are uh, node functions? Well, so node functions are really expressed in the cloud. Uh, you can use, you can select node 8 or node 10. You can specify your package JSON, um, where you just uh, specify your dependencies. And you can even uh, specify private modules um, where, via uh, NPM RC. Cool. So let's, that's a lot of talking. Let's get into a demo. Actually, a couple demos. So first, uh, let's go to the terminal. So um, let's say I want to go uh, deploy a function. So I can actually just, can everybody see that? Yep. Yep. 
So you can simply use the gcloud CLI to deploy your function. Um, uh, the command is gcloud functions uh, like deploy. Um, and you can specify your uh, name and uh, your runtime. Run so uh, as I said, I guess it can take up to two minutes. Um, usually it's 30 to 60 seconds uh, in my experience. Well, that's deploying. Let's go actually see what function we have. So here we have in the console uh, just a normal Google Cloud function. So we're at console.google.cloud.google.com. And let's see. Um, let me actually go to a more interesting demo. Cool, so here I have a normal Google uh, Google Sheet. Who here uses Google Sheets? I, 90% of you, that's awesome. Cool, I love Google Sheets. I used to work on Google Sheets uh, for a couple of years, actually. Let me figure out how to zoom in. I don't know why it took that long. Okay, so uh, do you know in Google Sheets you can create uh, custom functions? Yeah? Well. Uh, those custom functions can also call out cloud functions, which is, I think, really cool. So you can basically, uh, I created, uh, actually, a question for y'all. Um, who owns Bitcoin? Uh, raise your hands high, don't be shy. OK. Um, we have five people in the audience. Come on. I mean, it's the currency of the future, right? No. I, that's just me saying that. Just, it's not Google or anything. Um, well, so uh, let's say like we want to do some analytics on uh, Bitcoin and see like, okay, what's the price really been up to in the last uh, couple of uh, years? Well, so I created this uh, custom cloud function you can see, or custom function here in Google Spreadsheets, where it gets the Bitcoin price at a certain date uh, in that format, right? Um, and so what I can just do is I can just simply like. Close that, click the previous uh, cell, press enter, and it loads. If you were to buy Bitcoin in 2011, it would be 20 bucks. Well, the cool part is I can simply double click this bottom right corner, or just drag and drop, and I can run this cloud function just calling Coinbase's API um, and getting all the prices for Bitcoin. So you can see um, Bitcoin went down to $5, then 108 $5.90, it like dips and goes up, then dips and <laughs> then goes up. So I think right now it's been going up since 2017, but I think there's been some dips in between. Um, so there might be a dip. Um, anyway, so what does the code actually look like for that, right? Well, so for Google Sheets, you can just get to a tools and then script editor. And you can see all the code right here. Uh, simply, like I have some uh, JS doc uh, type uh, comments saying, "Hey, this is uh, the date. This is actually appearing in Google Sheets, right?" Um, and then this is the function. Takes in a date to the string. Um, so we want to go uh, format that into this type of format. And then we do this thing called URL fetch app um, dot fetch, which is basically just a fetch to our uh, URL, and then we um, just parse that results, and we get the actual map. Cool. So what does the code look like? Well, it looks like this. So here we have, we're just uh, getting a um, request promise, because we like promises. Um, and then we're just using a default date, but we're exporting a function, um, which is async, uh, takes in requests or in response, those are from Express, and let's see, does this work? Well, you can see here, um, we just have a little helper function called get btc as a date. There's a request promise to api.coinbase.com. Uh, V2 prices, BTC, 
to USD, and, and Coinbase requires like this header, this version for some reason, so I, I did that. And then, uh, and then we provide the authorization token, right? So it's a bear token, and then I used an environment variable, so I didn't expose my actual Coinbase token. Which, in this demo, right? Uh, that'd be bad. Um, cool. So, and then you can also uh, run this locally. So, if I want to run this on localhost, uh, this will actually just do an npx to install um, the functions framework. Then I can go on localhost, and wow, look, uh, I'm getting like actual data, and it's working, right? Yeah. So you can like develop these functions locally. Um, and then, what else? You can also call your function with gcloud, which is uh, basically if you just want to call your function from the command line. Oh look, I got my JSON in the command line, sweet. Cool. So basically, you can call your functions in multiple different ways. From Google Sheets, from the command line, from uh, Chrome, right? And uh, it's very versatile. It's pretty lightweight. Uh, it fits my needs. Cool. And then, and that's it. Uh, I would love if you have any feedback that you uh, come and talk to me. Or uh, you can actually go just like file an issue on my repo, uh, github.com slash grant, that's my name, uh, slash talks. And uh, thank you so much. You can also uh, tweet at me. Cool. And we can, uh, do we have time for a couple of live questions? Yeah. Um, where do we go to learn more? Like, what are some great resources that we can look at to like learn how to do what we did? Yeah, sure. So we have some awesome developer videos on this youtube.com um, slash Google Cloud Platform. Uh, we have a couple of code labs. So if you went to Google I.O. or if you just go uh, search for Google Code Labs, these are step-by-step uh, -step tutorials on uh, how to get started. And we have a couple with uh, Google Cloud Functions. Um, GitHub's a really great way. Uh, there's a couple, uh, yeah, I'll reset YouTube. There's a couple of really great YouTube videos. Um, and our documentation is pretty great. We embed the uh, GitHub samples um, directly in our docs. And we have a couple tutorials there. Especially if you want to learn some of the more advanced things like using PubSub uh, or using Firebase Analytics. Uh, mm -hmm. Any other questions? So, uh, oh, maybe one more? Yeah. yeah. Uh, you talked about some of the functions, like listening for events. Can yeah. you talk about like, what listening means? Does that mean like, tracking, or just what you showed us here with the Coinbase API? Yeah, so the question was about uh, listening to Google Cloud Functions, and like, I guess what are the options? And, yeah, what, what really does that mean, listening? Yeah, what does it really mean? So basically, uh, when you create a Google Cloud function, you, with your code, you also specify a trigger saying, this piece of code is going to execute on this type of event. And so the uh, most common one, which I showed, is like an HTTP event. Like whenever you go to this URL, we're going to trigger that. You can also trigger on uh, Google, like Google Cloud Storage. Whenever you upload something to a bucket, we're going to trigger with the context of that bucket. Or whenever uh, we listen to a PubSub event, trigger on that. And Firebase has like five events or something too. So how did you export that uh, Google Sheets function? Or you showed us the code, but how does that connect to Google Sheets? Oh, uh, that's a great question. I don't I think I forgot to show that. So in tools and then script editor. Um, so this is the secret uh, <laughs> for actually connecting it. Um, so it's a couple lines of code. Basically, we 
yeah, we fetch uh, this URL and um, we parse the contents and just uh, spit it back out. And so the way we connect it, basically, once you go into Tools Script Editor, uh, if you just have this custom function, uh, JSDoc, then this will be exported as like a global equals BTC CF. Uh, so it'll autocomplete, right? Yeah. Kind of like macros for sheets, right? Um, yeah, so uh, you can also record macros. It's sort of uh, outside of the talk, but um, basically, like, you do something and it's saved. You can save it and it'll, like, save it as code. So when you go back here, you can go into macros. I guess I have a lot. <laughs> um, and I typed in two and three, and so it like saves it as code. So this is really great if you're like a, you're not a developer, but you want to be able to save, create your own hotkeys. You can even do, I guess you could do hotkeys to trigger cloud functions. That would be really cool. <laughs> Good question. Uh, yep. So. What kind of options are there when things don't go well for error handling, debugging, logging, in these ephemeral functions? Yeah, that's a great question. I actually didn't cover that a whole lot. Uh, so the question was, um, what what can you do with uh, if things don't go well with uh, error handling, debugging, and logging? Well, so uh, that's a really good opportunity for me to show um, See, how do you get to it? Oh yeah, so here I can go into my function. So this is a Google Cloud Console. This is where you do all your operations within Google Cloud. And you can see, if I zoom out a little bit, so like you can see the number of invocations of your function. So we call this uh, 0.3 times per second uh, right now, and I tested it earlier today. Um, or yeah, and uh, you can go into basically. Oh shoot! Uh, you can go into uh, view logs, and you can go see uh, all executions via Stackdriver. So Stackdriver is the universal way for Google to log uh, invocations. And you also, uh, there's Stackdriver error reporting. So if you're getting 500s, for example, in your cloud functions, like in the middle of the night, you're not probably actively like looking at your cloud functions. Uh, well, you can just filter by all the error executions for your functions, and you'll, you'll be able to debug that way. Um, yep, great question. 